Thank you for being here. The end of the day, you made it. We're just going to be here for the next hour. Don't worry about it, okay? Now, it's going to take five minutes of your time. Trust me. Um, I'm going to talk to you about how we are improving our relia release reliability with Argo rollouts at Adobe. I uh, work on the Adobe Experience Manager cloud service. Um, it's a content management system that uh, probably you don't know about, but it's used for a lot, by a lot of uh, Fortune 100 companies. Uh, it's an existing Java application that has been around for several years, uh, using a lot of open source. And, and a very interesting point is that customers can write their own code and they, we run this for them on the cloud. On Kubernetes, some statistics, we run on Azure. We have more than 35 clusters and probably now closer than to 40 across multiple regions because people want to run this close to, to, their, to their customers, to people accessing it. Customers can have multiple environments and they can create new ones whenever they want. And this, we translate this into Kubernetes namespaces. And what I like to call these, are, these environments are like micro monoliths. So it's, uh, the way we scale is by uh, giving customers their own instances, their own deployments and uh, that way we scale up. So it's not that we have one service with thousands of uh, pods, it's just we have thousands of services with a few pods. So we have 17,000 environments, more than that. This translates into over 100,000 deployment objects across all our clusters and more than 6,000 namespaces. We're already doing progressive rollouts at the environment level, but we were not doing them at the deployment level. So the challenges we're trying to solve with Argo rollouts is how to avoid issues in production when we deploy Adobe code or the customer is deploying their own code for 17,000 unique services. So for the current uh, or the previous approach was uh, full to end end to end uh, testing, which is something that is very expensive, does not cover all the cases, does not scale very well. And when things fail, this requires a lot of analysis. Is this a problem that in our release is a problem on the customer code? It's just a temporary thing that is happening. It's very time consuming. This can uh, make the releases get delayed and it can impact 100% of the customer traffic if something goes wrong. So the solution, spoiler, probably is Argo rollouts. Um, we are the working on the Canary deployments with automatic rollback. This is based on real-world traffic, that's the advantage, and real-world error metrics, uh, using metrics that we already have uh, from Prometheus. What are the advantages of this? Uh, automatic rollback when we have higher rates. Uh, we have non-blocking rollouts uh, when ac across environments, and we can have a synchronous investigation if a customer is broken, uh, the tr it's automatically rolled back and the release can, pro uh, can continue across multiple customers if only a few of them are affected because it doesn't, the, the blast radius is very small and only a percentage of traffic is, is affected. This, uh, in, in, in summary, this is, means more frequent releases for us that are validated with real traffic and give us a lot more velocity which is always a good thing. Some things that are not so great about rollouts, uh, Argo rollouts is that the migration uh, from deployments to rollouts requires uh, orchestration to about downtime, uh, even when you're using a workload ref, uh, because you have to, after you scale up your rollout or Argo rollouts scale up your rollout, you have to now downscale your deployment. So this, this is a problem, as you can imagine, when you have th thousands of services. And some things we had to work on, uh, we have to have really good metrics. You're gonna make sure that these metrics are covering both canary and stable uh, labels on the pods, and making sure that you can differentiate between both. Uh, what happens when you have environments with very low traffic? Uh, when you don't have any traffic, it's really hard to, to see if, if something is breaking uh, because of the rollout you just made or is some other issue or you, the percentages, 100 percentage errors, if you have 10 requests, maybe it's not important. And the, 
another big issue is that the rollout requires changing the RAM books, the tooling, and the training using rollout objects instead of deployment. So it means it takes it takes some time to get people there. So to sum up, progressive rule delivery is a great idea. Uh, Argo rollouts is a great implementation that we chose to do this, um, but you just need to make uh, be aware of a few things that you need to iron out and, and be prepared for. So. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Uh, guys, we decided with Dan that we will not uh, make you go to the other room to, say, to listen how we say goodbye. So basically, thank you for the whole day. It's been a pleasure. It's been very intense, so get some rest. If you want to get, uh, you know, talk Argo tomorrow, there will be an Argo kiosk down there uh, at KubeCon, so make sure you check that out. Go to all the vendors, grab some swag, and also what's uh, what's also maybe of your interest, the next ArgoCon will be in Mountain View in California, probably in October. So start preparing that CFPs. And thank you. Give yourself a big, you know, applause because you've made it through the day. <laughs> <laughs>